Hello, and welcome to this presentation of the 2019-2020 School District of Manoa budget. My name is Carmen O'Brien, and I am the business manager for the district. When we start to plan a new project, it is imperative that the intention and purpose is clear to everyone involved. A budget is no different. Budgeting decisions must balance the needs of our students, our staff, and our community. One of the most important steps in this process is setting the property tax levy. The following presentation is intended to explain the rationale behind the 2019 levy that was unanimously passed by the Board of Education on October 28, 2019. To begin, I will compare data from this school year to the 2018-19 school year. Many of the revenues received are based on a per pupil basis. The official student count in September indicated that there are 634 students attending classes in the school district of Manoa. Aid is based on a three year rolling average of students. This year's average is down by 26 students. Because this decrease is so large, there are two one time exemptions the district is allowed to use to increase the tax levy. These are the declining enrollment exemption and the hold harmless exemption. Property values overall have increased. Recall that the town of Little Wolf had a significant increase in their taxes due to the assessor issuing a late report in 2017 that increased property values. This caused a double impact in 2018. Because of this, Little Wolf's apportionment of the school district's taxes increased, causing a ripple effect to all other taxing entities. This year, the city of Manoa will see a notable increase in taxes due to property valuations increasing by more than $13 million. This is a result of the 2017 Manufacturing Assessment Appeal from Treehouse Foods. According to Mr. Logan Haas, city of Manoa clerk and treasurer, 2019 will be the final year of the correction process. Included in the 2019 through 2021 state of Wisconsin biennial budget was an increase to something called the low revenue ceiling. For Manoa, this increases the allowable revenue limit by $300 per member. Next year, the budget affords another increase of $300 per member. The last significant change from the 2018-19 school year was the increase in the use of private school vouchers. The additional students that will receive vouchers for the 2019-2020 school year cost the public school district over $67,000 more than last school year. The two items in red were not known in the fall of 2018 and warrant some explanation. When the Board of Education and Administration team members were distributing information about the financial impact of the two referenda questions in the fall of 2018, the worst case scenario was planned for. We predicted the severe decline in enrollment and assumed there would be no increases in state or federal aid. Governor Evers was elected in the same election that our referenda passed. Part of his promise was to allow low spending districts like Manoa to be able to raise property taxes. So with the passage of the state budget, the low revenue ceiling was raised to $9,700. This is great news for the long-term sustainability of our district, but this assistance can potentially raise property taxes. In addition, the budget also added money outside the revenue limit by increasing the per pupil categorical aid by $88 per member. This increase does not affect property taxes and adds $62,000 to the school district of Manoa revenues. It should be noted that the budget was a bipartisan compromise and that Governor Evers full budget plan was not implemented. The increase in the number of private school vouchers was a surprise. This number is dependent upon which private schools are eligible to receive vouchers, the number of students that apply, and finally, how many applicants qualify. The amount of increase Manoa experienced 
is approximately equal to the cost of one beginning teacher salary and benefit package. Because we do not have any nearby private high schools, I did not estimate that the number of voucher students would increase so steeply. So how do these changes affect the levy situation for the school district of Manawa? According to calculations, the district is allowed to levy up to $3,279,084. If this amount was set, it would raise the mill rate to $10.16 per $1,000 of property value. Through the referendum process, taxpayers were told the referendum would not increase the mill rate from the $9.14 it had been at for the last three years. I want to make sure that I emphasize the next point. The referenda did not raise taxes. The energy efficiency levy of 2018-2019 was replaced by the referendum levy in 2019-2020. Those numbers are essentially equal and balance each other out in terms of property taxes. What does raise the allowable limit is the low revenue ceiling increase and the increase in participation in the private school voucher program. Again, these two pieces of data were not known last fall, and it was assumed that there would be no changes to the state budget. So let's talk about each. The low revenue ceiling is a result of the revenue limits that were enacted in 1993-1994. Since this time, districts could only raise property taxes by a limited amount. Lower spending districts were locked into a lower level than their neighbors that were higher spending prior to 1993, and they could never catch up. Manawa was a low spending district. The average levy per pupil in the state of Wisconsin is over $10,000. Manawa was set at $9,400 last year and thus qualified for the $300 increase. This is the largest increase to the ceiling since 2008 2009 and was very much needed because it allows for districts to levy more or add to the revenue limit without going to referendum. This is especially useful to assist in keeping up with the increase in costs that are not dependent on the number of students, such as heating, electricity, and general maintenance. A referendum is a question to the taxpayers that asks, can we exceed the revenue limit for a specific purpose? For Manawa, we asked our taxpayers for more money last fall for two projects, and they said yes. Then, seven months later, Governor Evers' budget allows the district to levy even more. This led the board to question, just because the district can tax more, should we? And the answer to that question was no. Next, let's review the Wisconsin Parental Choice Program, also known as the Private School Voucher Program. Private schools may choose to participate in the private school voucher program to receive a payment for eligible students. This payment is issued by the state and the money comes from a deduction in aid from the resident district. For the 2019-2020 school year, the state calculated that Manuel will receive $4.33 million in aid. In June though, the payment will be decreased by $91,736 the amount to pay for the voucher program. But to make up for the deduction, the district is allowed to add the cost to property taxes. This program started in 2015-2016 and was limited to 1% of a district's three-year average student membership count. This would be seven students given our current average. In 2017-18, the maximum number of students from a district that could receive vouchers was raised to 2%. In 2018-19, it was raised to 3%. In 2019-20, it was raised to 4%. And next year, the maximum is set at 5%. Again, the number of students that the school district of Manawa will have to pay for is dependent on how many qualify. But if the maximum number would have qualified for this school year, the expense could have been over $240,000 and would have decimated the budget along with any plans to keep taxes low. At the annual meeting of the citizens, followed by a board of education meeting on October 28, 2019, 
the levy amounts were set as summarized here. Though the state of Wisconsin gave schools like Manawa the authority to levy more, the school district of Manawa went to referenda and asked the taxpayers directly if we could raise taxes. Our constituents said yes for the two projects and the Board of Education said no to the additional levying authority. The district will under levy by $279,084. The Community Services Fund is used to support middle school athletics and the STEP volunteer program. For the past three years, these programs have run under budget and Fund 80 has built a balance of a little over $10,000. The board has decided to decrease this levy by the fund balance just this year to $30,000. This will not impact either program and the entire Fund 80 budget will remain at $40,000. These two decisions set the mill rate at $9.39 per $1,000 of property value for the school district of Manoa. The district is choosing to leave over a quarter of a million dollars on the table that it could have levied to taxpayers. This money could have been used to do really good things for our students. The Board of Education and I believe that we made a commitment to the taxpayers to not increase their tax burden. The voucher program, on the other hand, did not make that same promise. The school district of Manoa cannot be expected to shoulder the cost of the private school voucher program at the expense of our public school students. Therefore, the mill rate was increased by 25 cents, the cost of the private school voucher program to the district for the 2019-2020 school year. Thank you so much for taking time to listen to this presentation. I will close with this final thought about the budgeting process. None of the decisions we make are easy because we are aware that it is our duty to balance the needs of our students with the ability of our community to fund public education. If you have questions about the School District of Manoa budget, please feel free to contact me at the district office housed inside the Manoa Elementary School. I am also available at 596-5332 or by email at c-o-b-r-i-e-n at manawaschools.org. Further, I encourage you to contact your state legislators, Senator Luther Olson or Representative Kevin Peterson with questions or comments regarding state legislation that impacts public schools and public school funding.